All right, everybody. Welcome back to the Axe Hounds podcast, a podcast literally just about axes. And I am uh, Leif Backus, also here with Chris Killinger. As you will hear. And we're thinking of doing our second episode to uh, So You Want to Collect Axes. And like the first one, this is kind of like a a breeze through of uh, topics as we continue the podcast. It's probably going to get a lot more detailed on things. Um, and in the last podcast, we talked uh, briefly about why we are why we do what we do and why we think the axe deserves a special place uh, in in the tool lineup. Certainly on top of a hill of its own, and uh, and trying not to sound too scripted, but. You know, the topic of this segment is why we collect uh, personal stories in, in our future with axes. And if Chris wants to maybe start with that, um, why do you collect axes, Chris? So, I don't know. <laughs> um, a lot of it's just the, the romance on uh, the vintage axes, I guess. Uh, I collect new axes, too, so it's not all that. But... Uh, I think, like we touched in the in the last episode, in the beginning, it was a cheap hobby for me. Um, now I've gotten a little older and more established. Some of some of my collections more uh, expensive, and obviously the the price of axes has gone up tremendously. So um, it's kind of a game now. You gotta keep play the game to get get the stuff you want. But which is definitely what we're gonna delve into. Uh, as we go on, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it's uh, there's, there's so much you can do with an axe that you know shines above all the rest of the tools. You know, like you buy a saw and collect saws, which is cool, but all they do is saw, <laughs> you can saw wood or logs or whatever rip or cut but after that that's that's it that's all they do you know with an axe um you could pretty much build a whole house with one if you had enough you, ambition you could literally build a house with it if you had to yep it wouldn't uh you wouldn't need any other tool i mean it'd be a rough house but certainly could be done so i think a lot i think that's for me it's just a very very romantic versatile too. and i'm probably on the same page with that um as we say in the last podcast there's a there's a bit of romanticism with the axe um it's iconic it's our first compound tool i mean it's uh it's literally built the civilization of which we stand uh you know and everything's powered nowadays but an axe is a chance to um step back in history uh, and get a taste of how life was really, really like, I think, and how hard the people were that swung them for a living, uh, not just as a hobby or a, um, you know, as a part-time job or something like that, but used them all day, every day, relied on them. Uh, and in a, in a preceding podcast, we're going to cover, uh, some of those people that really stand above others. And an example of that be Dick Prineke. You know, and the other wood, woodcraft legends, Capart, Jaeger, and those guys. And, uh, but that that's a future podcast. So um, with personal stories, yeah, like I said, I'm with Chris. Uh, axes for, just bring me back to being young as, as well, being around a lot, of these, uh, a lot of these woodsmen that I grew up around at our fishing game club. These are older generation um, that were still, had their hands on an axe, um, to, to some respect to do things in life, but, you know, obviously we're power tooled as well. And I see, you know, I got old images that Chris has seen. And if anybody follows the social networks, I got old pictures of my grandfather swinging an ax at camp, um, which really, I, I got to say, you've seen those black and whites that I got. It's just one yeah. of those, it's one of those things that really just kicked, kicked me into high gear too. Um, just getting back into doing woodcraft stuff and bushcraft. Um, that was one of those things that really kicked me into axes and, and, uh, you know, now we're here and, uh, it's cost us both a lot of money. Yeah, you, should. you should post those pictures up on our Instagram. Uh, uh, you know what? That's a good point. I didn't think about that. Instagram. 
there's an Axe Hounds podcast Instagram now, in case you guys don't know. That is a perfect plug. It didn't even occur to me to say that. <laughs> yeah. Makes, yeah, makes perfect sense for something like this, because um, obviously these this video will be on YouTube eventually. But if you're just listening as a podcast and we reference stuff, we'll try to put that on our Instagram. So you have somewhere to go see what we were talking about. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, uh, as it sounds, Axe Hounds, A-X-E-H-O-U-N-D-S. Um, easy to find. And as we have personal stories and we're Axe collectors, uh, it, it's one of those things we can give you our stories. Everybody has their own, but uh, what's your end game, Chris? Where, what happens? Hmm. I don't know. You know, it, that's actually it's actually unknown t- at this point. Um, it, it, it's changed and evolved a lot over the, the years. You know, in the beginning, I just bought what I could, um, not knowing anything. And then as you learn, then you start looking for specific axes and you know what not to buy you know i went from i just bought what i could to buying everything to buying what i wanted because you so get I did a, the same thing yeah. yeah you get an excess i, and I, I mean it, there's only so many michigan pattern axes you can keep you know it's just ridiculous so um i've scaled back my collection quite a bit because of the axe class so a lot of my uh, extra heads went to those classes. Um, and now what I have left is what I would consider mostly premium stuff. Uh, there's very few just run-of-the-mill axes, unless they're like mint. Like I have a brand new Kelly Perfect Michigan pattern. You know, you wouldn't keep a beat-up one because there's literally thousands of them. But mm-hmm. You know, I have a brand new one with the original handle and original condition. You know, I'll keep that. Um, where does it go from here? You know, at this point, like, I, like I've said before, I'm a collector. So I'm just going to I'm going to keep collecting. Obviously, I'll, if I see stuff in the wild, I will pick it up. Um, I'm not done buying by any means. Um, if one or two here or there need to be sold to help keep the momentum going then i'll definitely do that but i'm not i'm not trying to sell anything in particular and then uh i want to get my collection to a point where everything is hung and sharp and ready to use if i want to use it and then you know hopefully when i'm older then the value of them will go up and maybe when i retire i'll sell off the lot i mean (laughs) you know i don't really have a an exit plan or or anything like that is just get what I can and display some of it and use some of it and um, cherish there, it. And, and the reason that I bring that up, because um, Chris and I have had a couple loose discussions about that in the last couple of weeks of where you see collections end up or where they're heading to and some personal stories uh, that I know of secondhand and then you see them firsthand. And sometimes a lot of these things, um, I don't know anybody who does any sort of picking. um, If you're a junker, like, like I go out junking or you do picking or stuff like that, you always run into um, people who pass away and leave these giant collections of stuff to kids or burden their wife with it. And it's not, and it's, uh, I, it feels like it more often ends in disaster. Um, Yeah. The one, the one kid comes in and sells the whole lot for dirt cheap to somebody who it's the same process is going to happen again. Um, or they're all sold off for pennies and somebody rips off somebody. Um, I could give stories, but I'll probably, I'll probably breathe. I'll just pass over that. But, um, I, I don't want in my life, I, you know, I, I'm, I pray that my, my son or, or my daughter is really interested then in them. Uh, by the time it's something that I can't, I can't deal with them anymore and they keep them and I can, I see that they're going to be taken care of. But if they're not, you know, I think that's something I'd proactively look at. To, I, I would hope by then that there's some tool museum, maybe, yeah. you, you know, something somewhere that you know that they're going to like, I, I don't know if there could be an axe museum 
I know Mike Miller's looking in that direction. I think it's a really good idea. Um, he could totally open one. He could open one himself, yeah. But maybe something that. But I, you know, I pray the kids are interested, and in, and in, and in, in my, you know, my estate isn't handled like just somebody comes in and buys them all for a, for a grand, and and then well, they'll never be. You know, the same thing will happen in another eighty years. Well, they, but it brings up a good point, and it's going to tie into later in our podcast. But um, this is another reason to involve your spouse and your children if you have children. Um, Actually, if you want, we're rolling right into that now. So go ahead. Yeah. Well, so you got to you got to involve your spouse and your children. You know, if you're first off, if your spouse is not on board with this, you're gonna have a hard time with it. Really, um, she doesn't have to be an expert, but she needs to know and have a clue for in case something did happen to you. You know, now she's left with medical bills and and the burden of handling these things and you don't want her selling off the black raven for $25 because she didn't know you know i, I see guys um the the common thing is i hope my wife never finds out what i really paid for it or something like that that's that's nonsense you can't do that you need your wife it'd be no different than your guns yeah um, I, I was just thinking that we're on the same plane it's like people handle do the same thing with guns, um, but t like take the axes just as seriously because in many cases their values are maybe not as high as some real collector pieces. But right, but your average yeah, your average expensive rifle. Well, that's a a, a Kelly registered and pristine condition. You know what I mean? It's it, it could be it could mean a difference between her being able to to bury you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, so you gotta you gotta involve your spouse. Just so that there's somebody else on board that knows, hey, what do I do? What do I, you know, where do I go from here? You know, he's got this, he's amassed this collection over years. I know it's worth something. Instead of them just having a freaking yard sale and anybody that walks by buys that axe. And they may not even know what it is. They're just going to buy it for, you know, an axe. So that's important. Getting your children involved is is it's important in so many ways i mean you know not only for the aspect of a child shouldn't just be brought up with a tv and a video game right, <laughs> they, right. they need hands-on experience with real life things um but to help to help them appreciate what is there so that maybe someday they can take over the collection you know and appreciate what you have and appreciate that that what you've built up for them um, over the years, you know. So maybe, maybe they don't want to keep them, but they'll at least have an idea what the things are worth, or at least know that they're worth something, you know. Instead of, I, I, I have a personal experience where I saw an estate sold off. Um, yeah, yeah. It's just, it, it made it almost made you cry. Like yeah. Yeah. the amount of. Um, stuff that was just sold at a yard sale because the, ch the ch children one didn't know anything about it they just needed they just knew that hey i need to get this money and the other one just didn't have the time to deal with it so it just it was insane i mean if they had taken their time and and learned about what they were selling they would have gotten a lot more money and money's not the only thing here but it's just why leave it on the table like that? Why, why just sell it off? You know, it's great for a guy like you or me walking up to a yard sale and there's a cheap would, act. It would be, but to it, you know, there's a guilt feeling if I, if it's something, you know, I don't know. I've had some good deals, but then again, you know, at the same point, you don't want to pay a ridiculous price for things either, but it would be lucky if somebody like you and I got them. That's not always the case. You know, I no. And I, I remember I spoke to one farmer. We had a sale out in the back roads, and he had sold a bunch of stuff at the beginning of the summer. This was just last summer. And I said, do you, you know, he had a, he had several buildings. And I asked, has he got any axes floating around? And he goes, no, I had a guy at the beginning of the summer made a big pile of everything I had and, and laughed all the way out the door. I said, I, I said, I won't ask you how much you took off him for, but I can tell you right now, I, you know, the things I bought off him, the guy probably got a pile of axes from that farm going back how many decades for a penny for 
for pennies. So, and you know, it's like, and I don't know who it was, you know, so it is what it is. It happens, you know, but get your spouse involved. I mean, you know, you got to build, you, I'm not going to get into marriage counseling, but <laughs> if there's problems, if there's friction there between you need to figure out why and, and get to the bottom of that, you know, maybe it's legit, but yeah, there's things Chris and I, we, Chris and I talk every day and you know, one thing I hate seeing, um, well, I hate, hate seeing it's, uh, I, it's disturbing to see is how, how guys have to hide everything they do from their wives. I find that really weird. I, you know, I've never been, uh, I'd never been checked by my wife because I spent 15 bucks on a Connie head. Right. It's some, it, like it, it's, it's never, ever come up before. Yeah. It's like, Oh, what'd you find? You know what I mean? I don't, I get, maybe we're lucky in that respect, but Chris and I, you know, we both, we're both makers. We sell, we see a lot of weird things where you guys have to hide, hide what they buy and, and collect from like, it's just weird to me. It's, I would say if that's a problem, address it, you know? Yeah. yeah just be, be up front with your spouse and be like, look, this is my passion. And, you know, I work hard for my money. And if I can't, you know, maybe we come up with a budget or something, come up with a plan, you know, sure, just there's get, nothing wrong with it. Yeah. get on board with each other. You know, my wife talks me into more purchases than I, than I, I would probably do. And, you know, sometimes on the, on the larger items, I'm a little uncomfortable and, you know, she'll, She'll be my voice of reason. And she'll be like, you know, it's a black raven. You're here in person holding it in your hand. You know, why would you not buy it? Yeah, you got a good deal on it too, I think. <laughs> well, yeah, but still, it's, it was still a big still, chunk of change. Yep, still and was. Yep. You're thinking, you know, I don't know, should I really spend this much? You know, what's, do I really need it? You know, but in, in the end, it all works out. And I always look at my collection as a whole. So even if it wasn't, even if it was full retail, you know, it still would have been a possibility. But I guess the point is, is like, you you know, that's how supportive my wife is towards this. I mean, a lot of you guys that are in the Axe Hounds Facebook or know my wife, you know, she's constantly in there um, bantering with the guys and stuff because, you know, she she supports this, you know, and and the Axe, the whole, the Axe thing is a big part of, of my life, you know, between the, the Facebook group um, stuff I make out of leather, the axe class, the the opportunities that I've I've had over the last few years because of the axes, you know. So she's she's a big supporter of it, and and honestly, I think that's that's probably one of the most important things. You know, I just wrote a note down because I remember we had a conversation about it a while ago. Um, when I first seen somebody mention it, I don't remember who. Um, I'm like, ah, that's a little extreme, but. You know, as we dig into this stuff, it kind of makes a lot more sense is um, keeping a, a running inventory of your collection <laughs> yeah. on paper. Yeah, I, 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 I would laugh at it a while ago, but now that, you know, I've got some money in these boxes behind me and on the wall, I'm like, well, you know, it's actually not a bad idea, you know, because uh, let, let's say I get robbed or the house burns, you know, that's my tools, a collection of assets. And uh, I'd be foolish if I didn't, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's it's probably a good idea to have a log of what you have. I know uh, vintage axe work is like Roy is insane. He has a complete spreadsheet. Oh, of really? Axe he owns. It's, he, I didn't know has, that. I didn't know that. Oh yeah, it's insane. He's got like five hundred axes or something, and it, he knows they're all they're all numbered. He knows exactly what he has at any given time. That's smart. Well, when we have Roy on, um, that's something we could definitely talk about. Yeah. Uh, it's a smart idea. Well, he's with a business too, so obviously it's already a good idea. But you know, for personal collectors like us, it's a good idea for your insurance. Um, I, I don't know because I'm I don't know I'm not a lawyer or anything, but I think video is as good as um, something written on paper. Sure, or, sure, if not yeah. better. Um, now at one point I did have quite a bit of my collection on YouTube, but I've taken a lot of those videos down, so that wouldn't. 100 percent be the best method for me but yeah a, a running tab of what you got and then especially uh maybe what you paid for it so that if something in in estimated value and then so if something did happen to you, your kids or your spouse or whatever could exactly reference. yep exactly all right so um 
collections, your what we're doing with it and all that. So I thought we'd talk about, well, how do you get one going in the first place? What steps does Chris and Leaf take to find heads? Um, and <clears throat> with that, uh, I think we're at a point now with the Internet. Uh, there are no real secrets. Um, everybody's out there. Everybody's looking. We can give you a few hints. And it really doesn't bother me to give up ways that I do things because I'm a patient person. And I, in the end, I really don't think it makes much of an impact. Um you know, if I do something that's maybe a little bit more clever than somebody else here, take it to your region, see if you can make it work for you. Um, and it just get more, more access in the hands that people should have them. You know what I mean? Um, I did break down a little bit, maybe steer the conversation, but you know, um, the top of my list was straight up a full retail buy for collection. Now, I could take a couple different forms, but I, I imagine a lot of us would see like buying a new ax or buying an old one from an antique dealer, or you get a third option. You get somebody who's like Roy, who does it. You know, he re- he does a full restoration, and therefore then you buy it at retail. Um, I I guess that's pretty straightforward. I mean, you you that's but uh, with it's antique. Tr- go ahead, go ahead. I just have a side <laughs> thought on that. Go um, ahead, absolutely. Like if you were to buy. A restored axe from an average Joe, in my mind, um, the the value isn't as high as if you bought an axe from a, a vintage axe works. So, <clears throat> when you look at Roy's work, and there's there's other guys out there, just, I'm not going to name them all off, but he's the one that stands out in mind. Plus, I'm good friends with him. So, yeah, Roy's a Roy's a good example, I think, for a lot of these discussions. Yeah. When you see Roy's work, it's unique and it stands out, and it's not something everyone can do. So, I would be more more happy to spend my money on a a vintage axe works than I would just an average Joe's restored axe. A lot of times, I might look at one and. If it's a, something I need in my collection, um, whether the guy the guy might have done an excellent job hanging it and all that, but I might ask him to cut the handle off just to ship it to me. I've I've done the same thing. Like I'm gonna take the handle out anyway. So it, if you could do me a favor, you feel bad about it in a way, but in the other way, it's like, well, no. I mean, I appreciate what you did, but I want to make it my own. You yeah, know, it's yep. it, it's just one of those things. So um, I don't think there's anything wrong with buying a brand new axe. Uh, there's, I own lots of them. Uh, I think it's great, especially with council tool with the direction they're going. Um, I own several of their axes. I, I think, uh, it's important to support that whether I mean, you may not agree with everything they do, but you, you certainly are going to agree with something. So you should at least support that, you know, Absolutely. buy something and them, keep them rolling. And they have many options. I mean, you don't have to spend a ton of money. Their, their new sport utility line is 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 a fantastic idea. I mean, they they uh, they changed a couple things to make the axes a little better, and they're still affordable, like fifty bucks and under. Yeah, that's, that's a um, no brain no brainer buy right there. Right, you know. And then there's the transfers. I don't think I don't think there's anything wrong with owning that stuff. Um, I own several of them. I've owned several of the small forest axes over the years. I I've owned a couple. Keep, yep. I don't keep them <laughs> for some reason. Neither I, did I. Yeah. I, I get rid of them, but I, I wouldn't be hesitant to buy another one. You know, it's not a bad axe, but like they're, um, I have one of their hewing hatchets. Uh, I'd like, I'd like one of their carving axes. I yeah. Think that's, that's on my, axe. yep. That's I on my list. That. I actually took that thing out as a, as my main user on a, an outing one night, uh, one weekend and used it exclusively. It's a great axe. You know, plus yeah. want to carve a bowl. Yeah. Right but yeah, there's there's nothing wrong with buying brand new axes. That could be your thing. You know, I, I'm going to collect new manufactured stuff. And it's it's we're so fortunate to have what we have available to us. You know, there's a couple Swedish brands. There's a couple USA brands. Um, there's a lot of variety. You know, Snow and Neely, obviously, I, it's they do a fantastic job and the price points are insane for what what you get i mean it's just a very high valued axe but and then like i was saying people like roy if, if there's an axe that you see and and you appreciate that person's work then spend the money support that support that maker 
you know, even though I could do it, doesn't mean that I have to. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? There's there's a level of appreciation for other people's work. And uh, with retail, I think antiques and picking start to merge into themselves. And this is how I get most of my stuff. I do get some stuff offline, uh, or online, excuse me. But I've, you know, for the last couple summers, I've been really lucky to be in the right places at the right time. Um, you know, myself and Scott from the group have a relationship with a guy who runs a corner down here and he holds axes for us now. Um, they don't even make it out to his tables, which is nice. So I guarantee, go ahead. That's key right there. Yeah. Yeah. Is building relationships with people you frequent. Tell them what you're looking for. Tell them you'll pay their price if it's, if it's reasonable and in, in good condition, you know, and so and he's w- very reasonable with price, but he's also reasonable in price. Um, I'd say he's favorable in price because I what Scott and I get off of him is is below a good price. You know what I mean? We, he does really well, but we always come back. We always buy from him, yep. and that's that's a key right there. And like I know I'll be good for a few heads this summer just by driving by and stopping. Um, but like so, for instance, with picking, like this year I'm going to try to get a little more aggressive. So I. <clears throat> I hit the yard sales, the, um, the, uh, when you have the town organized garage sales is a good time. And a couple of hints with that is, uh, you're less likely to find axes driving through a subdivision that's 20 years old or less. But if you drive through old neighborhoods that went, uh, you know, in the same part of town or something, you're always likely to find older stuff. Um, right. It's it, you start there, you finish. Because when you drive through the subdivisions, I tell you what, every garage sale is the same thing. It's seasonal tools and uh, mostly babies' clothes, baby babies' clothes, clothes. baby yeah. clothes. Yep. Yeah. And you rarely find you find things that you want. But you you get off the path, you get to the old neighborhoods, and uh, you can get really lucky really quick. And the other part of it uh, for me is, and you could probably pick up after this, um, be aggressive. I ask, even if there's a if there's an old garage and I don't see it sitting on a table or something, you, you got to lose that and you just go, hey, do you got any axes floating around the barn? Or you know, if, if they're se- if they're already a selling, guess what? They're in a selling mood. Yep. And I tell you what, you can find stuff and it does work. And if you got anything you want to say, go ahead. I was gonna. I, I was just gonna say the most important part of any of that is you have to ask. You cannot just assume they don't have it because most people, the average person does not think that axes are worth anything. Yep. If they have a broken handle, they think it's trash. So you have to ask. I I can't tell you how many times I've been to a yard sale, scoured the whole thing, nothing, walked up to the owners and said, hey, do you happen to have any axes? And they're like, yeah, back here in the barn, I had this junk one. Absolutely. The thing that's junk is the handle. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. People just don't understand it. It's literally the most important thing you can do when you're picking. Um, The, the relationship thing. I used to have a guy that he used to bring in. I I went there once a week, sometimes twice. And he goes, he goes to auctions. That's what he does. And he used to bring in axes for me every single week, two to five axes a week. And just set him behind the counter. And the reason he did that is because I bought everything. I didn't. I didn't pick or choose. After a few years, I started picking, picking and choosing. The guy stopped. He stopped bringing them in for me. So make that commitment. If you got to buy a, a Chinese axe for two fifty or three dollars to get the American-made Kelly Perfect for seven dollars, it makes sense to buy the Chinese axe. You know, scrap it if you want. I mean, it's. It's not a big deal. People get caught up in like, wow, I'm not spending $2 on it. Well, you just bought a $25 axe for $7. So now you paid 10 for it, whatever. Mm-hmm. So build, build those relationships with those guys at the flea markets and the antique stores, and guys and women. Um, the women are a little tougher, I, I find, to get them to hold stuff back. I don't know why. It is, it, they got like a first come, first serve attitude. So, but hey, whatever. You you still go in there and you smile and you you thank them and be polite and build up those relationships. 
Yeah, I, I one thing that I want to do this year um, is at my expense for ten bucks, I can get two hundred and fifty business cards made, and I'm gonna slap on it. I buy axes. It's gonna have my mobile phone number on it, and they can text me a picture directly of what they got. Uh, because people who are doing collections and f- looking for things are doing that type of out of uh, you know aggressively looking for it. Sure. So I'm not. I'm at. This isn't something new. I'm doing. It's it's a t- it's something I'm picking up. So when you go to an antique store that that rolls through good merchandise, it's not just garbage all the time. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna pay more at an antique store. I mean, let's not kid ourselves. But um, giving them a card of which they put into a rolodex of people who buy certain things, you'll find that these serious dealers will call you and it's it's 2019 uh chances are you could say send me a pic and it's going to show up on your phone so that's something i'm going to try this year so i'm going to make the business cards and i'm going to i'm going to hit a few of my frequent haunts and i'm also going to you know they may just throw them in the trash but hey if it maybe leads in six months to them whipping through the rolodex because somebody put five axe heads in their shop right I mean, I, a score for me, it's worth the 10 bucks I spent in 250 business cards. Other, other people do it. Other collectors do it. Um, interior decorators do that with antique shows, all the, uh, antique dealers all the time. And when you're out and about, like I, I made a mental note. I had a lot of sales last spring through fall, a lot. Um, you know, I've got my wife hooked into, I call it junking and picking, but she's now enjoys doing the rounds on the weekends, you know, hitting, hitting the sales. But I, I think of, <clears throat> I think of maybe 12 places of which I went through their, their sale. And I can tell that picking is something they do a lot of they, right. those, those people kind of stick out. That's the, that's the other type of person that I want to hand a card to. Like how often do you see axes? If you want to make a little extra money, Give me a call with a picture of what you got. They may throw you in your phone. I, it's just another way to be aggressive. And <clears throat> I think of a few times that uh, we got, you know, I'm in the Northeast. We got a lot of very old farms around here. And I've drove around with the wife and the kids in the car. And you see an old couple sitting out on the porch. And I've, I've seen this many times. It's like, what's it hurt you to stop and check out a farm that's been sitting there for 200 years and just ask a question? Yeah, I, I collect old tools, mainly axes. Do you have I have the chance of, you know, a few of them laying around or something you'd be willing to sell? You'd be amazed how quickly people perk up for a quick, quick buck of something they had no value in themselves. Um, or you may somebody may tell you to get the heck out of there. So yeah. but but hey, you have I just think of, you know, how old some of these barns are up here. I, I just I can't. It, it hurts to think about what's sitting in the corner somewhere covered in dirt or dust or Oh, I just throw them in the corner. They've been over there since I was a kid, and who knows? You know what I mean? And that's the type of aggression I'm going to put on uh, on buying this year. That's what you That's what you have to do now. I mean, it's yeah. not as easy as it used to be. And what you were just talking about, I, I, I would classify that as networking. Um, yeah, yeah, it's networking. Yeah. It's very important to network. You know, everybody that I know, that you know, personal family, friends, they know I collect axes. And if they see an axe, chances are they're going to call me. So you just have to put it out there. You have to say, "Hey, I collect the axes." This is it's a weird it's a weird thing, but that's what I do. So <laughs> <laughs> people have fun with it. They'll call you up and say, "Hey, have you ever seen one of these? I just found it. How much you give me for it?" And, you know, sometimes people people just assume because you collect it, it's gold. Mm-hmm. And they want a million dollars for it. And then other times people are like, Dad, just give me a couple bucks. I don't care. You know, I got my last Connie. Uh, we have a cabin up in Sakanaga Lake. There's an antique store that op- only opens seasonally in the spring up until uh, early fall. But she's familiar with my face now. I've been coming through there for years. She has a box that have axes in it. And I think I'm pretty good for one a year out of there. But like the last score I had was a $15 Connie. I asked her what she wanted. She says, 15 sound good. I'm not going to argue with her. It was no. a Kelly, it was a Kelly perfect or a, a Flynn edge. Excuse me. That was a Kelly Flynn edge, Connecticut yeah. in perfect it's shape. Just, yeah. I'm no not going to No, like 15 bucks. I said, I don't have a problem with that at all. Slapped it down and walked out. Yeah. A lot of guys, a lot of guys, they, they will not do that. They just, they have to get something. They have to, no matter how good the deal is, they have to, to try and talk the people down. And, I'm going to tell you right now, 
you're missing sales because of that. You're, yeah. Are purchases. yeah. You're, what you're doing is insulting the person that's selling it to you. Now, if it's a hundred dollars, okay, be realistic. If it's a hundred dollars and you know it's it's probably worth somewhere in that neighborhood, yeah, go ahead, bargain with them. You know, but if it's fifteen dollars and it's worth a hundred dollars, don't tell them five. Don't yeah. tell them. Five. You're just gonna piss them off, and then you know what? The next time one comes in, they're not gonna call you. Or they're not going to move with you on price. They're just that that whole that whole opportunity is now gone from you. Yeah, yeah. Be, yeah. I don't, a lot of flea market people have a very different um, mentality. Like the the people that set up the flea markets, man they 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 are so unapproachable. Yeah, they're they're <laughs> their own breed of people. <laughs> it is insane. And when you walk up to the table and give them back. And it's hard for me. Like, I, I struggle with it because I'm like, why are you such a pain in the butt? I mean, just like, can you just smile? Just, <laughs> it's a beautiful day out. You know, all these people are buying all their crap, you know. But they have such a bad attitude and such a, they're so unapproachable. And a lot of times they'll say, I want $100 for it. And I have, I'll sell that thing by the end of the day. No problem for $100. And like, it's just not even, it's not even an, an opportunity to negotiate. Yeah. So if you upset that guy even more, <laughs> you're just done. You're done. Yep. He's gonna remember you, and the next time he's gonna have something for for fifty, and he's gonna tell you a hundred because he just doesn't even want to deal with it. So you gotta bite your tongue and smile and be realistic. If it's fifteen dollars and it's worth a hundred, spend fifteen bucks. Don't yep. be crazy. Yep. And uh, I think I think for the last of. Uh how you acquire heads maybe we can breeze over the uh the dreaded ebay ebay website um chris has got some uh strategy i have strategy that are they're pretty much the same um and while ebay is not the uh used to be our uh, used to be a really good source it's not the best source anymore no. uh but it still can be useful and i think what, what do you what do you call those sales sleepers sleepers that's right yeah yeah, yeah go ahead sense. go ahead if you want yeah so what ebay is a game now it's just a game yes yes it is yes it is so you got to be willing to play the game and, and in order to play the game you get there's there's things you have to do um you have to be on ebay constantly you have to know what's available and what's new so there's a couple of things couple strategies i do um i have some notifications set up on my eBay. And anytime somebody posts a Norlin for sale, my phone goes off. Um, if there's another type of ax I'm looking for, that's the only one I have right now is because I'm, I'm making sure I have all the Norlins. Um, Cause you never know. There might be one more out there. Sure. But sure. I'm pretty sure I have all. Of them. So <laughs> the, if there's another axe like a Kelly Kelly registered uh, kind, so I'll type I'll put those in. So anytime somebody makes a listing of that, that it, your notification goes off. Now the reason why you want to do this is there's some people that just want to put something on eBay for a buy it now price and sell it really quick. They need the money, mm -hmm. and you'll see something pop up for fifty bucks that's worth two hundred. So. If you don't have those notifications, you're at the mercy of, of chance. You just happen to pond it. But if you have the notification, you're the first one to see it. So do not hesitate. Know what the heck you're looking at. Because I've seen Norland Saddle Cruisers come up as a buy it now for $100. You know, people are probably thinking, well, I wouldn't pay that. Okay, well, you could sell it for $200. Yeah, so yeah, you yeah. would pay it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you could double your money just by buying it. And I'm telling you, when I see stuff like that, I can't hit buy it now fast enough because I've I've hesitated before and it's been gone. So that's one of the the games. You you know you got to set up, know what you're looking for, set up notifications for it. Um, one of the other things is when I search a specific brand of axe, instead of just in one category like it automatically defaults to whatever category that's most likely to be in mm -hmm. 
I back all the categories out and I search all categories because sometimes people put things in categories they don't belong. Yes. That's one way. Um, I know guys that do misspelled words. They'll, they'll play around with words and misspelled and find stuff that way. Um, I don't do that. It's, it's just like, I got, I don't have the time. <laughs> There's so many ways you can misspell something. Um, and then just like, like I was saying, being on eBay, um, Sunday afternoon, evening is a really good time because it used to be people would list stuff on eBay so that it would end on Sunday evening when everybody was home. Um, I don't think that's important anymore because with your phone, you can be anywhere at any time and purchase something off of eBay. Yep. Um, so it's still a popular time to search. You know, I've found, I've found a lot of sleepers that way. And then uh, the big game, uh, <laughs> it's not fair, but it's how people bid now. It's called sniping. And, you know, I, I hate doing it because it's like, it seems unfair, but it happens to me all the time. So you either do it or... It's all, it's all part of playing the game now. Yeah, yep. I mean, you just... Yep. It, it's a shame that that's how we got to do it, but it's how you got to do it. So when you're looking at something and you're, you're going to spend some realistic money or some more than your average amount of money, and this has got to be a piece you want. You know, this is going to be your Black Ravens or your Kelly Registers or... You know, something that you want to add to your collection that's you're willing to pay a little bit more money for. Um, you know, you wait till the last five seconds and you give it all you got. Every penny you're willing to pay, you put that amount in at the last five seconds and hit submit and pray somebody doesn't outbid you. Yep. <laughs> or, and make sure that, you know, um, I've put in as much as $200 in that last five seconds and, and, was a little nervous. I didn't really want to spend 200 bucks or, or whatever. And I've gotten outbidded <laughs> you know, cause somebody else is doing that. But, yep. um, you know, and it, that's, I always refer to eBay. Somebody will say, what's this worth? Um, I get that a lot with the New Orleans. What's this worth? I'm like, well, what's it selling for on eBay? We can't, you can't go by that. Well, why can't you? It's the most realistic value uh, gathering information we have it's literally what somebody is willing to pay for it, you yeah know? it's it's so that it's it stinks i get it but <laughs> guess what it, yeah it's a pill you have to swallow if yep. if you go on ebay and something sold for five hundred dollars that's what it's worth because somebody paid five hundred dollars for it um will you have the same success probably not yeah <laughs> people get in bidding wars all the time you know stay away from that if you if you're bidding on something and no matter what you put in there, it goes higher and higher and higher. Well, you're probably bidding against Mike Miller. You're not going to win. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a bidding war. Just stay, stay out of the bidding wars. Yeah. I don't, I don't uh, involve myself with that. I don't even go that round anymore to get heads. Um, not that I don't go eBay. I just don't go that. I'm not going to bid up high. It's just, I, I'm sure there's something that might come up and I'll go, I'm just, I'm, go, I'm going for it. But it's very uh, rare for me to yeah. buy. It's very yeah. rare. Usually everything I buy on eBay these days is to buy it now. Um, just because it's I know what it is. That's that's key. Know what it is. You know, you know, know what you're looking for. You know, if you're not, you know, it's like finish axes. It's just something I've recently gotten into. And I don't know a lot about them. And you and I have talked about them, you know, just the the prices are kind of high and then you have to import them so by the time you get a finished axe head over here you know you're at 100 bucks yep so it's i'm still educating myself on it but you know a guy like matthew justice is already he's already educated himself he knows what he's looking at and he knows what it's worth it's nice to just reach out to a guy like him and say hey this is what i'm looking at and chances are he he might even have what you want already yep. in the states yep just, but know what you're looking for. Yeah, I, I have almost nothing to add to that eBay. Like I said, uh, you do a little bit more than that than I do. Uh, but the only thing I can put focus on is uh, surprisingly, people will list axes under categories you wouldn't expect. 
or under you know a, a title of the sale search term that you just it wouldn't click it like to give one up i would say like camping lot it wouldn't occur yep. to you like oh sleeping bags and a bunch of junk you just don't think about yeah um you'd be might you might be surprised at cutting tools that show up in a camping lot for some lady that runs her ebay store and just doesn't care um it may act the axe may not get its own listing it may get lumped in with something else and I have a surprising amount of axes you can find that crop up under camping. Like I know I'm giving it away, but like it, somebody else is already doing it, so don't worry. Sure. But but that's you know if that's you just thought yeah. about it. Somebody already else has already too. Do, yeah. T- ten other guys have already done it. So yeah, we're not breaking new bread here with that for sure. You know, I, 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 add, go ahead, go ahead. I want to add one more thing. The market's hot and cold, guys. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Pay attention to it. If you go on and you're looking for, and I always go back to New Orleans because it's literally one of the, it's, it's a roller coaster with New Orleans. Um, if, if you're on there and everything seems high, wait a couple months, then come back and look for the piece you're looking for. I guarantee amazed. it's going to yeah. come down. Yep. Especially if somebody just put a video out on something, don't, don't run to eBay. Like it's, it's too late. <laughs> it's too late. Yeah, wait. that's it. A- following trends that that might be a good topic to finish off that you made a good point is um when when your your said youtube star do, does an axe review or something like that or mentions a vintage head don't even go to ebay just <laughs> i just stay off of it for a couple of months cuz you can watch in like you can watch in action how quickly um you know, not to not to degrade anybody, how quickly fanboys can log on to eBay and start bidding up and buying up yeah. any any particular brand or head or something like that. You can you can watch it in real time. I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah, and I bet you after this podcast, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> some eBay some eBay search terms are going to get changed. And but you know what? I you know I'm not a greedy uh, greedy jerk, and I am patient. I think you have to be. Um, once you start really, you know, narrowing down your collection, but uh, axes are going to be out there um, and they're going to pop up. So I'm not, I'm not too worried about that. And I was going to direct this podcast into, um, so now you have some pieces, what are you going to do with them? And I think, I think I'll reiterate that with something that, you know, we were both talking about earlier is uh, inventorying your collection, you know, what you paid for it and its estimated value. But going any further that it's how you care, restore, use, and all that. And I think that's a good topic for a whole nother podcast. Yep. Uh, we just put uh, 50, uh, 50 minutes on, on this. And I think, uh, you know, I've, I've been uh, writing episode lists out for you guys. Um, and, like, I'm already ahead of myself now. So I think, I think we'll end it with that. What do you think? Yeah, that sounds good. I mean, you and I have talked about how the discussion on on this hobby yep. is endless and yeah i i don't think we'll ever i can't imagine running out of topics for podcasts no not especially if we're do, with that and bringing on guests which uh i think we're gonna work on very soon right. um and uh it's just gonna get more exciting so uh thanks everybody for downloading the second podcast here and please uh you know Find us, like us, share the podcast. Um, Social networking is key. Please post your Facebook pages, share it in groups. Find us on Instagram. Um, You can find us personally in the Axe Hounds group. Uh, But the Axe Hounds podcast is for everybody in this uh, community. It's not just uh, the Facebook group. So, I want to add a couple things, too. I want to say thank you to everyone that's personally reached out to us. Yes. The amount of personal messages that I've gotten telling us that we've done a great job and and they're looking forward to the next episode. We appreciate that. hundred percent. Yeah. I'll tell you if, if there wasn't any, I would probably be like, let's just scrap this whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was a bad idea. Skip it. Yeah. And uh, I mean, we don't even know how, how far this is reaching. Um, we have to put a couple more podcasts in to start getting uh, till I start getting the statistics from the place that I'm hosting the podcast through. But uh but that should be interesting to find out either. But we're on Google now. We're on Apple. I got approved for Apple Podcasts, so you can find us on iTunes. Um, I'm in uh, the Google Podcast app. I got us in there. So any any podcast player app you use, you should be able to search Axe Hounds, and we should come up. Yeah. 
So it shouldn't, you shouldn't have to, if you're just taking this right, right from, um, right from the place I'm hosting it from, I mean, you don't have to worry about it, but you should be able to search us without a problem now. And also it, if anybody ever has any questions about any of the topics, I, I, I'm not sure. I can't, I don't want to speak for you, Leaf, but I'm open to emails or, or pri private messages or feel free to reach out. I yeah. Yeah. Ideas are free flowing. Yeah, please. By all means, if there's something you think, you know, if you got, I don't know, maybe, maybe it's a discussion that you're, you're ready to have and we'll bring you on. I mean, yeah. it's, it's really that simple. Um, this is a community, so I don't want I don't, I definitely don't want it to be just Chris and I up here all the time. No. That would get boring. Yeah. 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 Right. Like, look at these two guys just trying to run everything. Yeah, yeah, I don't. Uh, yeah, that's definitely not what's going on. So, all right, with that, guys, thank you very much, and uh, we'll be getting this uploaded uh, later this afternoon. Awesome. All right, man.